Hello, this is 1.2 sets and set notation. The goal for this video will be to further understand some of the key concepts that were introduced in the last lesson. Key ideas. Sets that are not disjoint share common elements. And that's depicted in this image here. So you can see that the two circles representing A and B, they do in fact overlap. And so that section that overlaps kind of looks like a football shape. We call that the intersection. And we use the word and for that section. And look at the second bullet. It says each area of the Venn diagram represents something different. So we've established that that's the intersection. Those are the members uh, in this set A and B that are in common. Now... What about the members that are in one of the sets but not in the other? And so to the left and to the right, we see, and I'll shade here with red, this sort of shape, that's the A only. And then over on the other side, the members of B that are not in A, those are represented there, so B only. So they're in their own set but not in the other. And then the only other section that's left is outside of the two circles and those are the elements um, that are in neither A nor B. And so those are the four sections and I can shade out there as well. need to know. Each element in a universal set appears only once in a Venn diagram. So that's super important. We talked about that in the last lesson as don't count things twice. If an element occurs in more than one set, it is placed in the area of the Venn diagram where the sets overlap. In set notation, A intersect B. It denotes the elements that are common to A and B. The intersection is the region where the two sets overlap, represented by the football shape. A union B, it denotes all elements that belong to at least one of A or B. So you can be part of A, or you can be part of B, or you can be part of both. It's everything. So you shade A. And you shade B. And notice how the elements that are in both get shaded twice. And we have to make sure that we don't count these things twice. So we're going to start our lesson on page 153, doing example 2. So there are 38 students in a grade 12 class. That is our universe. So the rectangle is the universe. And inside that universe, we have students that are in the drama club and students that are in the band club. The number of students in the drama club and the band are illustrated in the Venn diagram. Use the diagram to answer the following questions. How many students are in both the drama club and the band? So we pick out this keyword here, and, and we focus on the intersection. These are the number of students that have joined both clubs. So they're, they're members of both clubs. And so we would say that the number of students in drama intersect band is 8. I'm just going to zoom in on that and fix that notation so it's cleaner. It kind of looks like this. It's an upside down U and it's kind of elongated. How many students are in the drama 
club, but not the band. And so this would be the number of students in drama only. And the number of students that are in drama only is 11. How many students are in the drama club? How many are in the band? And so when you're answering this question, you have two separate notations to figure out. You need the number in drama. You need the number in band. And so when we look at the Venn diagram, how many are in the blue circle? Well, 11 are here, 8 are here. So this whole blue circle, there's actually 19 people registered in the drama club. Similarly, the number of people in the band, well, there's six in band only, and there's eight that are in band that are also in drama, so they have to be included as well. So all together in this red circle, there's 14. How many students are in at least one of the drama or the band? So now the key word that we're going to pick out here is or. And so what we're looking for is now the union. So the number of drama, union, band. And so when we go to count everything in here, because that's what the union is, it's everything in D, everything in B. So we just take those three numbers and we have to add them up. So that's 11 plus 8 plus 6, and that's 25. How many students are in neither the drama club nor the band? And so now we're looking for how many students are in the universe but outside of the union, outside of the circles themselves. And so in this case, we have to use the fact that there's 38 students in the universe or 38 students in the class and 25 in the union. And so if there's 38 total and we've counted up 25 students, that must mean that there is 13 left over on the outside. And so we can put a 13 on the outside like that. And so just to reiterate, of the 38 students, we're going to classify them as here's my 38 students in a grade 12 class. That's the universe. Some of them are in drama. Some of them are in band. Some of them are in both. And so when we subdivide, 11 is drama only, 8 is drama and band, 6 is band only, and 13 are the students that are in neither drama nor band. So these three questions that follow are some of the common types of word problems that you'll get and they are the applications of union and and, union and intersection, I mean. So to do these, there's different strategies that I'll show you. In an Alberta school, there's 65 grade 12 students. So that's our universe, that's our total, and there will be, that's the largest value that we have. So that's the value of our universe. There's nothing that will be larger than 65. It's our maximum. Of these students, 23 play volleyball and 26 play basketball. So I know that the number that play volleyball is 23 and the number that play basketball is 26. There are 31 students who play neither. Okay, so that's going to be the complement of the union. So. To write that out, we're going to put number of, and then we're going to put volleyball, union, basketball, and what we want is the complement of the union. That's for the 31. Okay, and so sketching this out, we have our universe, and the first question we have to consider is, are the sets disjoint? 
because we need to know, do we draw the sets not overlapping or do we draw the sets overlapping? And so you have to look at the sum of these values over here. So when you add it all up, so they've told you the two sets, so 23 and 26, plus everyone that's not in those two sports. And so when you add those up, 23, 26, and 31, you get 80. And so when you look at the universe, there's only 65 students in the class, but yet we've counted 80. So some students have been counted twice. And remember that when you have um, a, a union of overlapping sets, some elements get counted twice. And so when you look at like how much more, it's 80 minus 65. There was 15 students that got counted twice. And so when you draw your overlapping sets, because they are in fact not disjoint because of the overlap, some people got counted twice, the 15 goes right here in the middle. Remember that uh, the 31, which was the union, the complement of the union, so that's out here. Those are the students that are not in volleyball and not in basketball. And so now we just need these last two sections. So again, there's always four sections typically when you have two set diagrams like this. So you got the V only, you got the V and B, you got the B only, and you have neither V nor B out here. And so when you look at the totals on the side here, 23 is the total for volleyball, and we already counted 15, so we go 23, take away 15, and there's eight students left there. Similarly, you have 26 that have joined basketball and so a quick subtraction of 26 and 15 you're going to get 11 okay and so just to reiterate there's 23 students in volleyball 26 students in basketball 15 in both those were the students that got counted twice and there's 31 in neither sport. They didn't join either. Jamil surveyed, pardon me, Jamal surveyed 34 people at his gym. He learned that 16 people do weight training three times a week, 21 people do cardio training three times a week, and six people train fewer than three times a week. How can he interpret his results? So you need to come up with categories. So we can say that uh, we have our universe, of course. The number of people in our universe, the number of people he surveyed is 34. 16 do weight training, so we can say maybe capital W. 21 do cardio, so maybe we can use a capital C. And then six people train fewer. So these are the people that didn't do uh, the three times a week. So we need the neither nor. So this is the complement of the union. Everybody outside of the union. So W or C. W or C. And we need the complement of that. Okay. And that's six. So when we sketch out our universe again you're going to want to look at when you add everything up, so they told you how many people do weights, they told you how many people do cardio, and they told you how many people do neither of that. You add all that up, 16, 21, and 6. And you get 43. And you go and look at how many people are actually in the universe. Well, there's only 34. So some people must have got counted twice. So how many people got counted twice? Looks like... Nine. Nine people got counted twice. And so these sets do overlap. 
There's some people that did weights and cardio three times a week. So, in fact, nine people did weights and cardio. And we said that six did neither. So six is out there. So those are the people that didn't do the weights or the cardio. Now, when you go to try to finish this off, you need to get to 16 for the W, and you need to get to 21 for the C. So you just have to do a quick subtraction from what's already there. So 16 take away 9, and 21 take away 9. Okay, and so 7 did weights only, and 12 did cardio only. And when you go to look as your check, add all these up, 6 plus 7 plus 9 plus 12, you should get the maximum, the, the total in the universe, the 34. Morgan surveyed 30 students in her math class about their eating habits. 18 of these students eat breakfast. 5 of the 18 students also eat lunch. Three students do not eat breakfast and do not eat lunch. How many students eat a healthy lunch? Well, Tyler solved this problem and, as shown below, but made an error. And this is the most common error. And so that's why it's here in the notes. What error did Tyler make and determine the correct solution? So let's take a look at the information. And we'll start from the bottom up. So three students... Do not eat breakfast. Do not eat lunch. So that's out here. That's okay. That was done correctly. You have three on the outside. So that's the neither nor. That's the complement of the union, and that's correct. Let's go to the next one here. Five of the 18 students also eat a healthy lunch. So that's here. So they're saying, if 18 eat breakfast, 5 also eat the lunch. So those are the people that ate breakfast and lunch, and so that's in the right spot. So that's the intersection there. They ate their breakfast and they ate their lunch. Now on this spot right here where it says 18 of these students eat breakfast, that means that this set B, all of it, this entire set, when you add it up, you should get 18. And so what's happened here is this person has put 18 thinking that, that that's the 18 only, but it's actually, you have to do a quick subtraction. So 18 take away 5, okay, that's going to be 13. And so that's what should be there. So always remember to account for what's already been placed in the intersection, the middle. And then you have to subtract from the total to get the only. And so the whole set itself has to add up to 18. So 5 ate both and 13 ate only breakfast. And that's the most common mistake, so that's why I've shown it to you.